All right, and welcome to posing. And here we're going to talking about uh, you know getting the most out of your characters and your shots, because good posing really help you you know maximize the impact of what you're doing. So good posing is clear, easy to read, strong. It communicates the scene and story well, and it feels natural. And when I say it feels natural, I mean that uh, there's a tendency to sort of uh, overdo uh, the acting and posing aspect where, you know, a character will just, you know, act out uh, whatever he's talking about, you know, using his body uh, to sort of illustrate his what he's saying. Uh, but oftentimes that feels very forced and, and strange. Um, so, you know, always remember also to keep a base in, you know, reality, um, because it makes makes it much easier to relate to as a viewer. Uh, so don't force it either. And the other thing we're going to talk about is the silhouette. Um, silhouettes are very important in posing because they ensure that they're completely readable. So here we have a character, you know, drinking out of a bottle, um, but it's not really very very clear. And if we just look at the silhouette, um, you can't really make out uh, what he's doing. No one can really see that he's drinking out of a bottle. If we instead turn him over to the side, however, it's very clear and easy to read, and we can instantly see that he's drinking out of a bottle. So always think about the silhouette of your characters and make sure that they're easy to read and separated from the background. Again, here's a character in agony. And, you know, it's a it's an okay pose, but we can really do it a lot better because if you look at this silhouette, it's not really clear, uh, you know, what exactly is going on. So, you know, this one uh, probably is a lot better. You can easily read, uh, you know, what he's doing. The third thing I'm going to talk about is also the line of action. Having a clear line of action makes sure that your characters have a direction and and that that direction is clear. So here he's bent down and you can see you can easily draw a line of action uh you know through his body. And this makes it very easy to read and tell what's going on. Next, here's a character with a, a hammer about to hit something. Very clear silhouette and also a clear line of action. That makes it incredibly easy to read and, you know, uh, very quick to process. So think about the line of action when you're sketching out your poses on paper. And, um, you know, you can also use the grease pencil feature in Blender to draw them uh, behind your characters before you start posing them in 3D. Again, here's a pointing uh, pose. And just notice how the all the limbs, you know, move in this direction and really, you know, make makes that pointing strong and clear. Now I'll go over a few Blender posing tips and also some useful tools that you can use to effectively pose your characters. First, there is the grease pencil feature I just talked about. When and which is best. Also, I'm going to talk about the auto IK feature, which is uh, useful and also checking uh, your poses from the camera. Uh, the first, first feature all, I want to pencil. show you is the grease pencil. So if you move down to the view menu... Now in Blender, and open if you go to the view menu, panel, the newest version of Blender has this grease pencil you can panel. Grease pencil. And what and grease pencil allows um, is for you to draw uh, in, a line or a series of lines you can just start and then drawing um, use those as a guide for poses. Screen. You can also use those lines as kind of, uh, you know, um, and notes for yourself uh, or the great you thing know, about other this is you can just annotation in uh, things the line of action that you might as you're about to typically otherwise do with 
So yeah, yeah. let's Real you know expensive. recreate the hammer pose from before. A lot of and other people have you know drawn you know, on their actual we'll screens just, and so on to do this, you know, but of course it's much nicer to do it that we had. Um, in 3D like this because right, it means we, that when you zoom in and out, it actually zooms uh, and, then, and pans you know, with your character. Our character. So for example, here I've made a little grease uh, pencil line, and I'm going to use this as a guide to pose my character. So I've given him, I've given him a uh, line of action here. And I can then use that to pose him. Now, Grease Pencil requires the newest version of Blender that's just been released, Blender 2.48. And um, so, if you don't have that version yet, you need to use that to be able to use uh, Grease and, Pencil. You know, uh, the other thing it's useful for, of course, is for reviewing shots. So if you're working on an, on an animation where you have someone who's overseeing your animation, for example, a director, uh, he could, you know, just annotate your shot by, you know, just drawing um, directly using the grease pencil and saying, you know, no, I want it to go a little bit more over here or a little bit more like this. And uh, you can use the grease pencil feature for that. Of course, using the little eye icon in the grease pencil panel, you can turn on or off the grease pencil line, so you can check it with or without, and look at the pose by itself as well. Next is IK versus FK. Now, first of all, FK, or uh, forward kinematics, is where you grab hold of any limb and move it around from the bottom up. So if to move the arm around, you grab hold of the first bone on the arm here, and then you, you move the other bone, uh, bones afterwards and change the position of the hand by you know, uh, moving around the parent bones. And uh, you know, this is the simplest way of moving things around. This is what you do when you just add a normal IK chain in Blender. And by default, this is the way you pose it. Then with IK, it's the opposite. If I just make the legs IK using these sliders here, I move them over to the right. Um, that means that I can grab hold of the foot and the rest of the leg moves with it. So that's the opposite way of posing a limb. So with FK, you're sort of posing from the bottom up, taking the parent bones and then moving the child uh, using the parents. And with IK, you're doing the opposite. These two different uh, approaches to posing limbs have their advantages and disadvantages. But most of the time, you'll use IK on the feet so that they don't slide around when you move around the parent, the uh, pelvis and so on. And you'll use FK on the arms. And the advantage of using FK there is that you'll get uh, nice uh, arcs when they swing around from, uh, uh, from left to right like this. Uh, because you don't get that for free with IK. So the advantage of IK is that they stay put and they're also you know, easy to place directly and the advantage with FK is that you get nice arcs uh, with very few keyframes. So you'll see, if I start moving the pelvis around like this, um, you'll see that the feet keep on uh, being where they are. So they keep on being stayed put. And um, that's very useful when you're doing like a walk cycle. Uh, you really want the feet to stay stuck to the ground as he's walking along. But of course you can control when you want to use FK and when you want to use IK. So let's say there's a shot involving this character and he's sort of holding onto a ledge or something, um, you know, with his arm. Uh, you might want to make that arm an IK arm. So here I'm making the, I, the arms uh, IK here. And... Uh, so whenever I move the pelvis and the body around, the arm will stay put. But if you want to grab a hold of some ledge, uh, you know, that's very useful. 
be able to say I want the arm to be just here. And here I've just posed him. This is the final pose. Uh, he's sort of hanging on to something. All right, let's look at all the uh, advantages and disadvantages of each uh, method again. So with IK, uh, the goals stay put. For example, uh, the feet. They won't slide around when you move the character around. And it's also easy and fast to pose. Because you can say, I want the foot to be there. And then the, the uh, legs will just follow along with it. It's also quite easy to control because you don't have to deal with multiple uh, bones to just you know alter the motion of that whole limb. And also, again, easy to tweak uh, for the same reasons as well. You only have one set of IPO curves to worry about uh, if you want to control that whole limb. So with FK, uh, the advantages are uh, mainly to do with arcs, right? So if you have something swinging back and forward, you get that for free with FK. And uh, that's very, very useful. You don't need to insert a lot of keyframes in order to get nice and smooth arcs. It happens uh, often uh, more or less automatically with very little tweaking. And because you get those arcs for free, um, there's not a need for very many keyframes. And because of that, it makes it a lot easier to tweak as well. So for arms and walk cycles um, and so on, you'll need, uh, you'll want to use FK. Also, um, FK is hierarchical, which is very useful if you want to do some overlapping action, for example, the hand is sort of swinging behind the arm as he's moving the arm around. And that becomes quite easy because you can just sort of animate with the hand on top of the rest uh, at the end of the chain. This brings me to Auto IK. Now, Auto IK is sort of a little bit of a hybrid between FK and IK. And Auto IK lets you position limbs on the character uh, in FK as though they were IK. And so to a limited degree, you sort of get the uh, uh, best of both, both worlds here. Um, but really, uh, what it is, it's, it's a much faster and easier way to pose uh, FK limbs. So if you have an arm here that's FK, you can pose it as though it was IK by just moving the hand around. can still uh, use normal FK movement as well. And you'll see when I move the hand around, it sort of draws a line into the uh, you know, origin of the chain as well. And it lets you sort of see what it's doing. And so it lets you, uh, you know, pose limbs very quickly um, using IK style posing, where you just sort of say, I want it to be there yet you still use FK interpolation, which means that the uh, arms will still have nice arcs. Oh, the last thing, checking from the camera. Now, when you have a pose like this, uh, you might spend a lot of time making sure that it looks good. And when you're in 3D, you'll find yourself revolving around the character and looking at it from all different kinds of angles. Well, I find that a pose doesn't always have to look correct from all angles. If it looks correct from the camera, that's what the viewer will see. So by clicking zero on the keyboard, you can quickly jump to the camera view and check your pose from there. Another useful tip is that you can add a second 3D view. So I'm adding it here. And you can make that a camera view by pressing zero on the keyboard, right? And then you can pose your character and always refer to the top view. I'll just uh, disable the little lock icon down here and also disable the bones, which means that I can always have a clutter-free view 
of my pose. So when I move it around in the big 3D view, I can always refer to it from the camera uh, in this little view up in the corner. And this makes it very easy to, at a glance, always check the pose from the camera. So if it doesn't look good in that shot, it won't look good for the viewer. The last tip is uh, using the play blast feature which lets you spit out a little movie in very crude quality to preview your animation. So instead of rendering it out with all the correct lighting and shadows you want to use, uh, you can get a really uh, you know, full speed little movie that you can look at. Of course, you can always also press Alt-A and view it directly um, in 3D. Uh, but often if you have lots of details, then the computer won't keep up. So if you shift click the little landscape icon in uh, the bottom of the 3D window, it will render out a little movie. All right, that's all. These were all the tips I had about posing. Thanks for watching. Bye.